I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 26th of October, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we had a fun day out with the family and the kids at different times doing different things. We had a lot of time out today. So I decided that today's topic is going to be sharing what we did today with you to give you an idea of what our lifestyle is like here in Nicaragua as it's always changing and I think interesting for people to see that we do some very normal and very different things compared to what you're used to other places. Also, I'm making this video just 30 minutes after we had chocolate covered strawberries and pineapples delivered from a local chocolate covered strawberry vendor, which was pretty neat because we just discovered them recently, thanks to Alan who had found them and tried them out. And it took about 20 minutes from the time they opened in the morning to have them zipped right over to the house. I can't snap my fingers. My daughter makes fun of me for that. Uh, and so we just had that, which was very cool. We're gonna get to what we did today, right after the bump. <music> It is a Thursday here in Leon, Nicaragua. In fact, it's Thursday everywhere in the world today, but we only care about it here. So today is a pretty busy day overall because we had a lot of things going on. I had to work all morning as I normally do, but come to early afternoon, I had promised the girls because technically the 27th, for those of you in North America, which is the majority of my audience, is the opening day for FNAF. That's the Five Nights at Freddy movie uh, that comes out, it should release at midnight tonight. So real quick, for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, Five Nights at Freddy is a video game from nearly a decade ago uh, that was kind of a sleeper hit. It was never expected to be anything totally different than most games out there. Totally not my thing whatsoever, but my kids got really into it. And it's one of those games that has very little story, but created a lot of lore. And so it's got this huge cult following and ended up spawning like six or seven other video games. Uh, my kids have played like all of them. They have the VR ones, they have the regular ones. They played through them. They watch uh, videos about other people playing them. They read books about it. They are really into the universe of Five Nights at Freddy. And this is not a game most of you are going to be interested in, certainly not me. It is a jump scare horror genre um, about basically demon possessed animatronics from an evil Chuck E. Cheese with a serial killer. It's not what you would normally expect people to want to play, but it does have some interesting elements. It's very different and it has spawned this huge cult following enough that they were able to make a movie based on it, which is pretty amazing considering other places that have gotten full releases for a video game movie include franchises like Assassin's Creed and uh, um, Prince of Persia, right? Things that have much longer time frames uh, of popularity, much bigger audiences and much more mainstream. This is really cool that a, a very cult following special game genre managed to get its own movie but it was a weird one but it's releasing at midnight for the 27th for North America but here in Nicaragua and I'm sure some other markets we got it on the 26th in the afternoon we didn't really think about this, but um, because of my schedule and stuff, uh, we decided, because we didn't know what was gonna be going on today, and I decided I needed some, just some flexibility with my schedule, uh, we decided to go for the one o'clock showing, which is the first showing here in Leon and also in Chinandega. We have the same uh, cinemas in both, uh, the uh, uh, Siglo Nuevo, Plaza, uh, and it's a really a nice theater. We're very happy with it. We've used it a few times in the past, not that many, but we really like going to the movies here. It's a lot of fun. It's very comfortable. It's like going to the movies in the United States a long time ago, a long time ago, meaning like the 90s, uh, when the theaters were nice and clean, people were respectful, the seats were comfortable, it's not over the top, it's not crazy, and it's not expensive. It was not expensive at all. I think I uh, spent a little bit north of $15, but that was for three people to get tickets to the movie, and for three large popcorns, two bottled waters, and a large soda, uh, and it came out to somewhere around uh, 600 Cordoba, which is a little bit under $20, right? So I probably spent like $18 on the whole thing. And the popcorn was good, my soda was good, whatever. Um, and uh, and the seats, that this is the first time we'd been in these seats, so it was very comfortable. And uh, from a movie perspective, they're doing a showing every two hours. So it was one o'clock, a three, a five, a seven, a nine, 11. There might have been one after that, I'm not sure. And both cities out here were doing that. I'm sure there's lots of showings around the rest of the country. I only know these two because we have this theater chain out here. And uh, so we went to this opening show. We were blown away that it wasn't 
full, but it was quite busy. There were people everywhere, and every time a new character came on, people would cheer, people were dressed up in costume, like people were into it clearly. These were Five Nights at Freddy fans. This was not like random people who had seen information about the movie and thought they'd go check it out, right? These are people who definitely knew the game, and when like characters came on, they knew which ones to cheer for. When they said like catchphrases, they knew what things would be excited about. It was a neat experience, honestly. We really had a good time. And as the, the kids are like, this is gonna be an awful movie. Like, let's just be straight about this. This is not gonna be a good movie, but we have to go see it and it's gonna be a fun experience. And Luciana especially said um, afterwards, she was like very glad that they went. She said, I've never been at a movie theater where people were engaged before. It's always sit quietly, do nothing. She's like the experience of being with a bunch of people who are also FNAF fans and excited about it and engaged and like reacting to the screen together as a group. She really liked that. The people we're sitting next to would be like, <gasps> you know, and like just, just really reacting to everything. Although the movie, I have to say, I, I, if you didn't tell me it was a horror movie, I'd just be like, it's a suspenseful movie. And not really that suspenseful. It's kind of a, kind of a drama with a dark horror kind of underlying theme, but it, it, was, it was a bit odd in many ways, but better than I was expecting. Uh, but we had a really nice outing, the three of us going to see that. My wife didn't go with us because she didn't know she'd be able to handle the movie, uh, but I think she would. So the kids are gonna watch it with her when it comes out on Amazon Prime. So we did that, had a really nice time. The seats were super comfortable. I wanted to talk about that. Uh, last time we were in the theater, it was more traditional seats. So I know for those who are in the United States, you're used to paying very high amounts for uh, really big, luxurious seats and lots of features and, and big restaurant. Here, it's a little bit different. First of all, it's cheap. It's just a few dollars to get into a movie. Um, and the seats are more like upgraded 1990s US seats. More traditional, just the normal armrest, the normal everything, but it's, it's quite comfortable, very clean and nice and modern, but simple, nothing over the top, but absolutely great for sitting through. It's not like, if you remember the 1980s, so those metal seats are really thick and they creak down and it was like awful, right? Very uncomfortable, wasn't great for, no, it's not like that. These are very comfortable seats in general. But this theater that we had this time had upgraded the seats and they have armrests that go up. So you actually can, you don't have to have it down. You have a lot more space, it's a lot more comfortable. It was really nice for watching the movie and they gave us all of our food on a tray. We just get popcorn. We just think of the movie theater as a, as a popcorn place really. But I did notice other people, they were getting real food for the movie. So people, can, you can get nachos, which is pretty normal. You can get hot dogs and stuff like that. People had like full meals, simple stuff, but full meals. And from what I can tell, the quality is pretty decent. It's not that really, really cheap quality that you get at American cinemas most of the time. Of course, if you go to a really fancy thing, uh, like the, the Alamo uh, Cinema in, in Dallas, right? Those, are, yeah, of course you have a really fancy restaurant associated and you can get cocktails and all kinds of things. Obviously it's not like that, but it's also not like a normal movie theater where you're getting like really cheap hot dogs and stuff. Like they're, they're putting in some effort to make it good. So that's really nice. In the theater, Connected is also a Tip Top, which is the big chain of fried chicken. Uh, it's basically in the same ecosystem place as a McDonald's in the United States. Uh, relatively cheap, not super cheap, good quality, um, big chain throughout the whole country, you can get anywhere. Uh, and also a Hollywood pizza, that's why they have that name, because it's connected to the movie theater, which has really good pizza and similar fare, um, and we get food from there all the time um, but it's really nice you can go and get pizza before you go into the movies which I always have liked doing in the past uh, and then get your popcorn or whatever for the movie it's just a great combination of things especially if you want to take a, a night out with the family or have a date night uh, you can go get some form of more fulfilling dinner and then go to the movies and then have a very affordable popcorn and everything uh, while you while you watch so that was nice on our way back to the car, uh, the girls had been wanting to go to Casa del Cafe, which is a rather expensive coffee shop, but we were walking right past it as there's one near the theater. So we said, yeah, let's go. So we stopped in and got some coffee and hung out for a little bit there on the way home as well. So we had a really nice time hanging out, the three of us uh, together for the afternoon. And uh, it was just a really nice time. Came home from there, worked a little bit more, had a few hours to get some work done. Um, some of our friends were coming in from Managua and just getting everything uh, situated for the day. Tonight, our friends uh, Caroling and Ronnie are performing at uh, Patio El Padrino, which is right downtown. Uh, but This is Caroling's first time doing a major performance in a few years. She shows up and sings from time to time, but just does one or two songs with uh, a band when they're playing. This is where she's actually the headliner for the night, and she's been wanting to get back into the circuit, uh, but has not had a chance to do so. So tonight is her time back, and she's actually playing on Saturday night at Food Rock as well, which we do a lot of shows from Food Rock. So if you've seen that, you know the venue. 
So we really wanted to make sure we were there for that. And they're starting on the early side because Padrino is not a super late night place. So they're starting officially at seven, but of course everybody starts quite a bit later than they state. Uh, so we had to get ready to go and pack everything up and I'm doing my full filming for the Nika Roomba channel. For those who have not visited it, please go check out youtube.com slash at Nika Roomba, and that takes you directly to uh, the, the list. Uh, it's very new. I've been working with them. Um, I'm the one with the camera, right? So I'm doing a lot of concerts uh, where we record full concerts and events here in Nicaragua. It's about six of them up. And the last one that we did, I've, I've got several that I'm working on editing and uploading. Hopefully by the time you see this, you'll have at least one more. Um, but we did a really big one with Cadejo. It's almost three hours long with a big interview. And we are outperforming other bands, uh, YouTube channels in the country by such an unbelievable Believable margin even though it's a long-form video and has this big interview in the middle really cool and I know that it's you guys here on this channel are a major component of getting out there and supporting that so thank you so much you're really making a difference you really help making that happen and that's that's super exciting so uh, we're going out and recording tonight and recorded tonight uh, and got hopefully I've not seen any of the footage I haven't heard anything but as far as I know, it looks like we got a really good copy of the entire performance uh, that will be going up on the Nika Roomba channel because I, I'm trying to shift from putting concerts on here because it's very different than what we do and, and letting Nika Roomba use them for the work that they're doing. And uh, that way, and, and I, you know, to be fair, that channel's not monetized and this one is and concerts like that essentially can't be monetized. So I really appreciate everybody who watches them and you, you know, you're supporting the channel in, in that getting the word out and getting YouTube to, to like the channel and the algorithm and all that stuff sort of way. But when you watch those concerts, really there's no revenue coming to me or extremely little because it's shared with every person who wrote the songs and things, which is how it should be, right? But um, the Nika Roomba channel isn't monetized. So all that money just goes to the, the songwriters. Yeah, the songwriters. And um, it, it doesn't make my channel convoluted uh, in, in a weird way, right? Like it's nice having the views and the time and everything, but that doesn't really contribute to anything in a hard sense over here and over there. Uh, it helps make everything possible and gets, gets the word out. So thank you so much for everyone who's supporting the work that we're doing over there. I think it's very important culturally and we're getting a lot of feedback from people in the country that this is really a meaningful thing for them. That is a giant water truck backing up that I think it's a water, some big truck is backing up in the middle of the street. And, um, uh, this is a great way for Nicaraguans to get their culture out into a larger audience and let people see what it's really like here, right? Because the, the music, the performances, the artists here are often uh, pretty isolated. And um, in general, Nicaragua tends to be an isolated culture. It's very difficult to travel from here. So being able to share the art and music of this place with the world it's very meaningful, very important uh, for Nicaraguans. And uh, so that's a, that's a big piece of what Nicky Rumba is doing through that channel on YouTube. So it, it, it's been fantastic. And you guys are really doing a lot of work to make all of that possible. Um, along with very excited about like yesterday did the interview with Jack Pittman. That was super cool. I can't wait till that's up on his channel. By the time you see this, I suspect it will be, uh, but we'll see. It takes a long time to upload, download, edit, all those things. I know everything takes a really long time. So we did that tonight, uh, went at just after seven, stayed until pretty close to midnight uh, and called it a night. And uh, back home, um, going to be a busy day working tomorrow. I'm supposed to be running to Managua in the morning to get a yellow fever vaccination. We'll talk about that on tomorrow's show. And uh, other than that, thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, ideas, things we need to do, things you need information about, just general questions that you have, comments you want to make, scroll down. Leave those comments down below. I do my best to read and respond to as much as I can and answer questions from there whenever possible. It helps make content for the show, so I really appreciate that. And share on social media. Tell people about the show. Watch another episode, even if you just let it run in the background. Whatever, that stuff really helps uh, let YouTube know that the algorithm should be prioritizing what we do here. And uh, if nothing else, I will see all of you tomorrow.